Hello and welcome to this Power BI and Power Query tutorial with me, James from MathStar Software. And today I'm going to go through how to create a grouped index in Power Query. So not just a row number index iterates through every row of a table, uh, but where we can group that potentially in our case by the state or the city level, it could be a type of some sort of product. Now, as you can see, the index if we were just to use the add index column, that's just going to iterate through every row. So I'm going to showcase further on how we can actually group at the state level here. You see by California, Washington, Oregon, and the city level. Um, and I'm going to showcase this. First of all, we're going to actually hop into SQL Server Management Studio um, and look at window function row number, um, how we can do this by partition or by groups of our data. And then we will hop back into Power Query and I will showcase a more advanced example to achieve the same result. Now, the reason I wanted to showcase this in SQL is it's uh, it's very common functionality to use this window function. And you may actually not have the ability to, to modify your data at SQL level, so you may need to use it in Power Query. But it's helpful for those who've used SQL before um, just to understand, and I can showcase from that side what I'm doing. So if a store ID, store name, this is from the read available, readily available pubs data set, a store address, a city, a state, and a zip code. And what I want to do is apply an index or an index number, a row number, for every store within a specified state. So for Washington, California, and Oregon. So what I'm going to do here is just type out all the column names and we'll use a window function, the row number function, just to give an index for each of those partitions. And that's what I mean by a grouped index, where we take sets of our data that we specify. In our case, it will be state. And then we're just going to apply an index there. So the syntax, very simple. I'm just going to alias with equals in front. That's uh, specific to SQL Server. You could use as as the alias afterwards to name this. But you can see I'm applying that row number uh, within the state partition. So that's how I'm grouping my data. Um, and I'm just ordering it by the city, which will order it in alphabetical order. So as you can see, within the state California, the first three rows, I have an index, one, two, three. And then it reverts to one for Oregon and again reverts to one for Washington. And we have a second line. So that gives us two indexes there. Now that's fine. So how do we achieve this in Power Query? Well, the secret here, we need to use the group by function. You can right click on the column name, state is what we want, and we will simply group by state. You can call this whatever you want. It says new column name, it'll be grouping, but actually we're not looking for an aggregate value. We're just using all rows. So this actually produces a table. Now, what we can do with this sub table is we can use a tiny bit of custom M code, again, to apply an index. So you can go to add column, custom column and you can call this whatever you like for simplicity i will just call this new table that we're going to get indexing and i can go ahead and write my custom m code so there's a nice function table dot add index column and we need to specify three parameters or arguments so we want uh, the initial table that we're using to create our sub table so that's grouping we want to specify the name of the new column that will be indexed just for simplicity and how we want our index to start. So in computer science, quite often an index starts from zero. We're just going to use one, um, but that should achieve our desired result and it should work well. So we'll click OK. And just wanted to show you when, when you're at the stage before where you have these, these new tables that we're creating, if you just click over the table, you can actually see exactly what we're doing. And then you can see in the next step, if we click again, how that index relates to our sort of our new um, sub tables that we have. But this looks good. Now all that's left to do is that we can actually go ahead, remove other columns. We just want to keep this indexing table we have. And we click that expand icon at the top right. And we want to expand every column in this case. So when we click OK, that looks great. If we scroll along, we have all of our initial data. But now we have an index that's actually specified at the state level. So you can go ahead and order this, reorder this however you like. But you can see we actually have an index for each state that is relevant to the, um, to the store at the city level. And again, you can go ahead 
and sort of ascending, descending, however you like. Um, but yeah, have a look at this, play around with it. It's actually quite common functionality that you may come across in a variety of scenarios. Um, but yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this. And if you found it helpful, like, comment, subscribe and share. Thank you.